Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see you all this morning. I hope that you'll be able to stay for, for a cup of coffee or a, a cold drink and maybe a little treat after church today. Um, rumor has it that on Friday, somebody celebrated their 80th birthday. I think he's getting sick of this already. We're going to sing again, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Earl. Happy birthday to you. And didn't one of the little guys used used to say, and many more, or was that somebody else? I have to tell you though. I joined the five other people on our mission trip who were 80 years old. <laughs> this isn't a team of young men. No, it's not a team of young men. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. Well, it is good to see everyone this morning. I'm so glad you're here. And you know, as we're as we're worshiping this morning, let's look for the peace of God. I know. Every one of us has something in our lives that's going on today. So for some of us, it might be little. For some of us, it might not be little at all. But let's just try to feel the peace of God in this place today. And whether we're climbing a treacherous path or walking a journey of grace, we are welcomed, received, and accompanied by God. Christ invites us to do the same for others, whoever they are and wherever they are on life's journey. Would you stand, if you're able, and join me in the call to worship? Welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you. May the joy we have in our Lord Jesus Christ become your joy also. Thanks be to God who has welcomed each one of us. Let us extend that same loving welcome to others. Would you join me now in hymn number 710, Faith of Our Fathers. Join me in our opening prayer. Lord, 
Lord, as we walk through the door to this place of worship, we brought with us our cares and our concerns, our joys and our sorrows. Touch our hearts and heal us, Lord. Make us ready to become your faithful disciples. Amen. Thank you. 
you for Gracie's big sister. And I thank you that they're all here today. And I pray that you keep them safe and keep them well as they grow into wonderful young people. And Lord, I just pray for the two, the three of them. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, you can, pardon me. Are you going to go back and sit with, sit with your sister and your grandparents? Okay, because we're not going to be going in the, we're not going to be going in the back for, for a while. We're going to just stay in church, okay? Would you would you join me now in singing hymn number 328, Surely the Presence of the Lord? You can remain seated. that I'm reading today comes from Genesis. Genesis 22, verses 1 through 14. Before I even read it, I will tell you that this is a scripture that I struggle with, but I think it's a message that God is calling us to hear today. God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and Abraham said, I'm here. God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him up as an entirely burned offering there on one of the mountains that I will show you. Abraham got up early in the morning, harnessed his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, together with his son Isaac. He split the wood for the offering, set out, and went to the place that God had described to him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place at a distance. Abraham said to his servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will walk up there, worship, and then come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the entirely burned offering and laid it on his son Isaac. He took the fire and the knife in his hand, and the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And Abraham said, I'm here, my son. Isaac said, here is the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, the lamb for the burnt offering, God will see to it, my son. And the two of them walked on together. They arrived at the place that God had described to him, and Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He tied up his son Isaac and laid him on, on the top of the wood. Then Abraham stretched out his hand and was ready to slay his son. But the Lord's messenger called out to Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham said, I'm here. And the messenger said, don't stretch out your hand against the young man and don't do anything to him. I now know that you revere God and didn't hold back your son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a sim single ram caught by its horns in the dense underbrush. <coughs> Abraham went over, took the ram, and offered it as an entirely burned offering instead of his son. Abraham named that place the Lord Sees. That is the reason people today say, on this mountain, the Lord is seen. I've never been one that really like tests. I think I actually sometimes even get what they call white coat syndrome when I go to the doctors. And I'm really thankful that nobody has given me that test yet where you have to remember three numbers. 
the, the word, oh, it's three words. What? It wasn't numbers at all. I'm really thankful for that because it makes me nervous just thinking about it. Somebody told me once that so, they make you count backward from seven to see if, from a hundred by seven, to see if you've still got your wits about you. So I practice that just to make sure I'm ready. I'll probably switch to a different number. So some of us get nervous when we have tests. I remember my daughter going to have her test to be a registered occupational therapist. She was a wreck. In fact, I think at one point if I told her that she didn't have to take the test and we could just go home, she would have been fine with it. But she stayed and the outcome was fine. But here we have a test that Abraham was given that really, really makes us wonder, doesn't it? Why would a loving God test a man's faith like this? The whole incident seems strange. I can't even imagine being in the situation where I was asked to sacrifice someone near and dear to me. Some scholars believe that the voice that told Abraham to slay his son was not the voice of God. Perhaps Abraham was listening to the voice of the culture. At the time, human sacrifice was a common practice. Maybe God wanted this story here to make a statement that human sacrifice was wrong, and therefore he intervened to stop it. Maybe that's a possibility, but I think maybe there was a different reason for it. Since when does God make sense? Remember, this is the same God who gave a son to Abraham and Sarah when they were well past the age to have a son. The story was absurd, just as this one is. But God is absurd, and the voice of God sometimes calls us into that absurdity. This was the same God who told Noah to build an ark when it wasn't raining. This is the same God that led the Israelites to the Red Sea and then parted the sea so they could go across and get away from the Egyptians. This is the same God that delivered his son in the little obscure town of Bethlehem. Abraham was put to a horrific test. God had demonstrated the impossible by giving them Isaac. His first firstborn son, he had followed through, God had followed through. God made a covenant with Noah and promised Abraham, land, and descendants. The story is really hard for us to imagine because it puts Isaac in grave danger. I don't really believe that God ever intended to harm Isaac. God, but God could have intervened at any point during, the, during that whole scenario. Why God created this is offensive to us. But then sometimes that's the only way that God can get our attention. God does the absurd, the impossible, the ridiculous. And what Abraham demonstrated in this story is a complete surrender of his will. God, Abraham proceeded as God told him without hesitation, without complaining, without debate. Abraham accepted the challenge and ultimately passed the test. One wonders why Abraham would consider doing what he had been told to do. But it never occurred to Abraham that God wouldn't provide for him. Abraham proceeded because he trusted in God completely and noticed that Abraham responded to God by saying, here I am. He was ready and willing as he responded to the call. For Abraham, there were no excuses. There's no other agenda. 
God called, Abraham responded. He prepared himself for the journey and he proceeded. He didn't look at his appointment book or ask his family if they had plans. He didn't have to think it over or sleep on it. He didn't say, oh, wake up, I'll get back to you. He didn't say, you know, I'd really like to, but. What God wanted was Abraham's absolute commitment and unqualified faith. Abraham came through it with flying colors. Notice, too, that when Isaac questioned his father about the lamb, Abraham told him that God would provide. Abraham had complete faith that whatever resources were needed would be there. There was no reason to worry, since God would provide for all his needs. And finally, it wasn't enough that Abraham believed in God. Abraham had to make the journey. He has to go the distance. This is illustrated by the fact that they traveled for three days. And God didn't intervene until the very last moment when Abraham reached for his weapon. God had seen enough. God was convinced that he could trust Abraham. For it was then that the angel of God said, for now I know that you fear God. Are we willing to go the distance for our faith? For Abraham going the distance meant taking a test which could have had dire consequences. It meant trusting in God who in the past had made extraordinary requests from other leaders of the faith like Noah. It meant believing that God would provide all of his needs. It meant that the God of absurdity would call him to other ridiculous tasks. Friends, are we up to such a test? I don't know about you, but I'm a creature of habit. And I like to be comfortable in my little, blo in my little box. I don't like to step outside the box. We don't want to be different. We don't want to be known as people who do crazy things. Some of us don't like risks. And some of us don't like to lose. We'd rather know what's on the exam in advance. Or maybe we'd like to cheat our way through life. As I mentioned to the children, this week is the 4th of July. I know, poor Grace was hoping it was Christmas Eve, but it's not. I seem to remember that on the 4th of July, we celebrate some very insane revolutionaries. They decided to take on Mother England and fight for independence. They were outnumbered, lacked training and resources, and their government was fragile and unorganized. One of the things, too, when you think about what they were trying to do, it actually took a month to get the Declaration of Independence signed because it had to go by horseback from up in New England to the most southern colony. It took a lot of time. There was no email. There was no overnight postage. They, but they prevailed. And they won the battle, and they passed the test because they were committed, and they had faith that what they were fighting for was right. We all have dreams, beliefs, and goals that are never reached because we fail to live up to the test. God wants us to have faith and support that faith with commitment. God wants us to trust that God will provide for us in the future just as he has provided for us in the past. God wants us to heed the call to service even when the voice that we hear makes no sense at all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you brought us to this place this morning. You, we hear your word, we sing songs, we, we pray, and Lord, we just ask you to be with us Help us to have listening ears. 
Help us to take the time to listen to you. Help us to be still and know that you are God. Lord, bless us in our listening and in our doing what you ask us to do. Amen. A few um, concerns, no, a praise that I have this morning, first of all, is that the mission team with six 80-year-old members on it did good work this week. And they actually got done early and were able to come home on Friday instead of Saturday. I'm asking for prayers for the Yenilevich family. Um, Bill passed away last week. And also for the Bar Bartoli family. Bob Bartoli passed away at the beginning of the week. And I would like you to keep pastors who are in new assignments today in your prayers. This is the Sunday that, that new pastors go into their new churches. And I just pray that you will, I, I ask that you will pray for them. Do we have other joys and or concerns? make it to 55 years old, I'm going to be 100 and something. <laughs> Just so you know. Cheryl, are Lola's mom? Absolutely. Ida Scott, Lola's mom, is in the hospital, and um, they're just trying to figure out what, what's going on. And so please keep Ida in your prayers. I did see her on Thursday, and she was in good spirits, and we had communion, and so I was... I'm sorry to hear that she's not doing, not feeling well. Nancy. We had our 52nd wedding anniversary. Well, there you go. That was the 30th. The 30th. Okay, so we have a 55 and a 52. That's wonderful. Congratulations to you both. Our kids say that we're dinosaurs. People don't do that anymore. <laughs> God bless you both. <laughs> Nancy. Um, Joy Grin Osman made it through her surgery and she's doing very well. I spoke with her yesterday. Hopefully she'll come home on Wednesday and um, it's a relief to know that it's, uh, her leg is, is finally being dealt with. Good. That's wonderful. I'm, that's good news. Other? Brenda. that one year she wants to forget. <laughs> I'd like us to remember some of the people that we worked with down in uh, Virginia. Um, they touched our lives and we hopefully touched theirs. Center. She's been handicapped her whole life. She's only got use of her hands and her neck. She's in a wheelchair. She's strapped in. But she works at the center. She's been there for 10 years that I've been going there. She drives her own van and has two jobs. But the government sends somebody out twice a year to see if she's still handicapped. <laughs> Did everybody hear what Earl said? Okay. And the one place we worked at, the grandparents had two sets of grandkids. They were taken care of because the parents were in jail. So it's interesting some of the people you meet. And I'm sure the team was a, a light in their lives. Should we go to the Lord in prayer? Almighty God, it is so good to be in this place. We thank you for the anniversaries that have been celebrated recently for Paul and Brenda and for Paulette and Ed 
and for Nancy and Dan. Lord, I just pray for those couples that you will just bless them. Bless them and bless all of us that um, are married and approach these wedding anniversaries that we're surprised we ever got to. But Lord, I, I thank you. And I don't think any of us are dinosaurs and definitely not Nancy and Paulette, um, even though the grandkids might think so. Lord, I, I pray. I thank you for just the fact that we could be here this morning. I, I thank you that Fran Ackman did well that her surgery went well and she's due to come home on Wednesday. Lord, I just pray for her continued healing. I pray for the Bartoli family and the Yanilevich family as they, as they mourn the loss of um, Bob and Bill. Lord, I pray for, pray for pastors that are on new assignments today. I pray for Pastor Daniel as he's serving Lehman Eye Town and Maple Grove, I pray for those two churches as they welcome he and his family into their midst. I pray for Gene Sparaza as he is serving a new church um, starting today. And Lord, I just pray that the, that the congregations will be welcoming and just be with these pastors in their, in their new assignments. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for being with us every step of the way. I thank you that you guide us. I thank you that you do speak to us, but help us to listen. And Lord, I pray, I pray for those people in our lives that sometimes we have a hard time. We want to complain. We want to grumble. We want to take our toys and go home. We know, Lord, that everybody isn't always likable, but you call us to love one another. And Lord, we pray that we will be able to do that well and to never forget that you are in our midst and you're helping us with that task. Lord, I pray for those that are waiting. I pray for Ida as she probably is waiting for the doctors to see what they say. I pray for Ida and Barry and Marty and Karen and um, Brad as, as they wait to hear from the doctors. Lord, it's, it's tough to wait. It's tough to wait. And Lord, I, I just, I just pray that you will help us to be better waiters. And I don't mean we're serving tables. Lord, I just pray that you will help us to wait, help us to do your will for our lives and help us to proceed without questioning. Lord, that's hard for us sometimes. Sometimes it's hard for us to agree with one another. Sometimes it's hard for us to, to see another person's point. But Lord, bless us. Bless us and help us. to do your will. Lord, I pray for others on our prayer list, for those that are dealing with cancer. I pray for them for healing. I pray for Art and Barb as they celebrated their 58th wedding anniversary earlier this week. Lord, I, I just pray for, I, I just pray for your guidance in our lives. I pray that you will, that you will just hear our concerns and lighten our load. I pray for Jimmy as he's waiting for surgery. And I pray for his parents as they, as they await news. Lord, bless us, bless our country, that, the country that was founded so many years ago. It was founded because men believed in you. Well, men and women believed in you. And Lord, sometimes when I see some of the things that are happening in this country, it just makes me shake my head. Lord, I pray that you will be in the midst of our leadership, that you will be walking beside them, and that you will be giving them guidance. Help us not to always feel like it's them, or not, them and us. Help us to understand 
that you will guide us if we just listen. Lord, be with us. Be with us today as we pray our prayer of confession. Patient Lord, we want to extend the hand of welcome and friendship to all whom we meet. Or sometimes we shy away from reaching out. We make judgments about others based on their appearance and other surface factors, and we neglect your mandate to be a welcoming presence. That lack of welcome extends further when we see needs that must be addressed and choose to turn our backs. We turn away from the pain and suffering, protecting our own lives, yet you remind us that as we welcome others, so we are also welcoming you. Heal us and give us strength and courage to always be welcoming others in your name. Amen. As God has blessed us, let us now give our tithes and offerings. and our generosity, may others know your loving welcome and your gracious mercy. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you please be seated and turn to page 13?
and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release of the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He took and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many as the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to come to the altar rail to share in this meal. Pearl, would you direct people to come up? And Barry, if you would give me a hand.
had a meal with his disciples. Jesus had a meal with his followers, and he told them to remember every time they ate bread and drank juice, you should remember that Jesus died for them. Jesus loves us all.
Love of God. Amen. 